Hello everybody, it's Hashem here and welcome back to another Pushing Film live stream. So thanks for joining me today if you're here live. The main reason for this video is because I haven't uploaded a video to the channel for a little while and I thought I would just give a little update as to why that is and uh, just to sort of fill in the gap so to speak. Because what's happening at the moment is I'm in the process of moving house. So you may notice that the uh, space that I'm filming in at the moment looks a little bit different. Uh, there's still a fair bit of mess to go through and uh, things to organize, but I'm getting there. It has been a very busy week or so since that last video that I uploaded to the channel. So that that's what's going on at the moment. And due to that, it's going to remain busy for another week or so while I'm in the process of uh, finishing this move and uh, setting up this new office space and studio and also trying to keep up with other work, including photography jobs and such. So I thought I'd let you know there's going to be a bit of a, an absence of videos on the channel during this gap between the last uploaded one and maybe the next one. But rest assured that I do have things on the cards that I'm working on and a little bit of that is something I'm going to share today. And what that is, is that I received a beta unit version of the Veloy 360 uh, film holder and advancer. So I've got that here. It arrived from from Camera Store, which you may have heard of all the way uh, over in Europe, I'm pretty sure. And I've been having chats with the guys behind uh, Veloy for a little while. And uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, we have some spare beta units, uh, you know, one out of maybe 10 or something that they had. And would you like to have a look at it? No obligation to even make a video or anything. Just give us your thoughts. And yeah, so of course, yeah, I'm interested. And uh, being someone who is into DSLR film digitization and scanning, I am definitely quite interested in this product and have been interested in it ever since they put out the Kickstarter. So the holders themselves are just these plastic bits. So you can kind of see that they're uh, really simple plastic holders. There is the, the 35 mil version I have there, little instruction book. And they also sent me the 120 holder. So I've got all that. But the most interesting thing about this product to me is the option for this advancer unit. Beautiful machined, I don't know, machined or whatever it's called, just metal, you know, <laughs> uh, piece of equipment, similar to what I expect the negative supply uh, holder and system might feel like in terms of its heft and build quality. And the film holder or mask would just slip in to the top there. So... I haven't tested this product properly yet. I've had a play with it. Um, just a basic look at the mechanism for advancing the film, which is this roller mechanism with the little rubber O-rings, I guess you'd call them. And uh, it looks good. It looks like it has a lot of potential. I um, like the design of the uh, holders, the film holders, having what they call an S-curve in the track here, which supposedly will give you a flatter film a flatter frame as you're scanning it through. So I'm really interested to try this. So let me know, when I actually put out a video on this, what would you like to see in that video? What would you like me to focus on in terms of testing? Is it flatness? Is it the speed of scanning? Um, how it compares to the essential film holder? I'm sure a lot of people want to see that, which is what I uh, use at the moment. And having done my extensive review on the essential film holder, of course, I'm going to have to compare it to this. So I could even pose the video as a comparison to the essential film holder and uh, share those results in that video. So, uh, But yeah, I'm going to need some time to test it. And I'm sure a lot of other guys on YouTube will have put out their reviews or whatever first. So let me know what you'd like to see so that between now and then I can maybe integrate that into the video and my uh, testing of the Veloy 360. So yeah, who's who's into film scanning at home? Um, is anyone here someone who scans their own film? What do you use at the moment? Have you been looking forward to this product? Had, did you even hear about it? So my friend Ribsy from the UK already put out a video on the Veloy 360. And uh, you can have a look at his for that you know review that he did already. So I'm going to try and make mine and try and make it a little bit different and look into you know a different angle of, of reviewing it. And I'm thinking maybe that comparison to the EFH, which is what I currently use and what I really enjoy using. 
And just checking the comments here, got Xander from Belarus. Hello, hey, how's it going? And Vanessa from Toronto, thanks for joining. Good morning from Germany. Hello, good. Yeah, it's morning in Germany. That's right. And uh, Vanessa's asking, are you able to scan the borders? Yeah, so with this Valoi, you are able to scan that thin black border because the frame will sort of allow a bit of extra black space beyond the actual film frame, but it won't include the border all the way to the edge with the information such as Kodak or whatever it was written on the edge. Um, and that applies to 35 mil or 120. You'll get a thin black border only, which is my preference because obviously if you need to hold the film flat, it needs to hold on to those edges. Uh, so you can't really get the full borders in a system like this unless they create some different mask and it wouldn't really work well for the, the advancer. So yeah, I like the thin black border and I think that's pretty good. And I've got... Um, Hey, Donovan, how you going, man? I'm waiting for my Kickstarter to deliver my Valoi and the rest of the accessories. So I'm guessing you got the full kit. And uh, what Donovan's talking about there is uh, Valoi, I think, does a full kit that includes the Advancer and the masks uh, rather than just buying the masks individually, which you can do as well. The masks on their own uh, are quite cheap. So if you only ever scan 35 mil, for example, you can just get the mask. A big thing between this and the EFH is obviously the lack of a diffuser. And I know that they sell a diffuser for this as an optional accessory. It would probably just snap onto the bottom somehow. And I'm guessing that's included in maybe one of the biggest kits or you have to buy it separately. Um, but what I'm thinking to do is to even try using this on top of my EFH diffuser. It should fit. It looks like it's about the same size. But yeah, let me know anything that you think would be good to see in that uh, testing and review. Xander saying it looks like they've improved it since Nico reviewed it. All right, I haven't actually seen Nico's review actually because Nico had a full version. My version's a beta unit. So what um, Arold from Valoi told me is that these masks are not complete. There might be uh, less flatness compared to the final product. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind. And of course, when I do my review, I'm going to have to mention that and keep in mind that this is a beta unit. It's not the complete um, finished product. So there will be maybe some compromise in flatness or maybe fitment, but uh, I'm still really looking forward to trying that. And I will check out Nico's review because I know he uh, has been a big like advocate of this Kickstarter. Perfectly boring. Use an SP3000, but would happily get rid of it for something smaller. <laughs> yeah. An SP3000 is not exactly compact. Justine, hi from Borneo. Hey, that's great. Um, I've got a friend from Borneo, from the Indonesian side of Borneo. Mike, I'm in the same group. I'd love to see a scan holder with gap for borders. Yeah, so currently I use the EFH, which lets you have a bit of the black border and also has the option for a different mask that scans the full borders with the words Kodak, Portra, or whatever it is. If you're interested in that, check out my video on the channel for how to scan film with borders. I'm sure you'll find it if you just scroll back, uh, you know, a few months. But yeah, the good thing with this Valoi is that it still gives you the thin black border. Mike, I'm in the same group. I'd love to see a scan holder. Oh, yeah, sorry, just read that. Um, Donovan wants the whole shebang. Nice. Who went with the whole shebang? Vanessa, I was scanning with an Epson flatbed, but I just sold it, and I'm actually thinking about buying the Valoi. I'll wait for your review to make a decision. Well, thanks. Yeah, I'm sure other guys will put out their reviews first, so uh, that would be cool if you do want to wait for mine. I'm sure I'll try and find some kind of new informational angle by then. And uh, they did offer me like an affiliate code, but I'd I'm not going to share that right now because obviously I haven't really shared anything about the the holder. So I'll wait until I do that full video. And someone asking, what do you think of a $20 prepaid roll for Devon scan or print 35 mil? That sounds like a good idea. I think some places do that, similar to Silberzals, if that's maybe what you're talking about, where it's a prepaid by the roll of film and they include processing and printing maybe. Um, I remember you know, coming across that with other labs in the past. So with digitalizer, you can scan the sprocket holes from uh, Roushi photo, if I'm saying that right. That is correct. With digitalizer, you scan, you can scan the sprocket holes. I used to have a digitalizer and it's, in my opinion, not so great at holding the film flat uh, and it's very finicky. I didn't enjoy using it as much as I would have liked to. And depending on the film, it can be very hard to actually hold the film with any level of flatness if you're trying to get those sprockets. I did it with some panoramic stuff. It worked, but I tested it against an Epson flatbed and it was way less flat than that. And it was quite soft in the scan. So if you're not too fast about the output, 
digitalizer will work well but yeah my personal opinion is it wasn't the the most ideal product um, even if you want to just get the borders but it is quick and easy i guess if you're comparing it to something much more complicated than that but yeah i also found it was uh, had a tendency to scratch film sylvester i use a printed film holder and a fuji x series camera looking forward to seeing how the Beloy works to upgrade yeah, I guess the biggest upgrade for someone who's using a simple manual holder would be the fact that you have this advancer option. For me, that's what took my interest. The essential film holder is just an essential product. It just does what you need it to do, but it doesn't have any bells and whistles. This is a much more expensive product, so you would have to justify that cost by wanting some of those features like the advancing mechanism. Have I tried trichromatic scanning? No, I've heard about that, and I'm assuming it might give better results somehow but no i'm not, not actually done much research on that don i might try it on top of my sky copy box light as well yeah so if you already have a good diffuser i would advise using that with your valoi if any of you guys get one um, unless you have a very well diffused led zand i just got my essential film holder loving it yeah great i'm still loving mine it's a simple and effective product and um it's priced well i think for what you get um it's dan from the last meetup oh hey man Thanks for joining. Yeah, that was our last Melbourne meetup. If any of you guys are based in Melbourne, um, check out the Discord server, which I have a link for in this video that you can uh, join onto any future meetups through our little um, chat there. I'm happy with the flatbed. I just don't like the holder that comes with it. Yeah, the, if it's the Epson, then the holders aren't great, especially some of the older ones, but the V800, I um, didn't mind the holders on that. I thought they were pretty good. They had the, the clear plastic bit. They're not the best. They're still not as good as something like this or the EFH where there's not as much contact and dust. But they were better than the previous Epson holders as far as I know. A lot of people would buy the V800 holders as an upgrade. So it might be worth looking into that. Perfectly boring. Three exposures of red, green, and blue. Yeah, right. Merged in Photoshop. Captures full color spectrum. So yeah, it sounds pretty involved, but... Maybe if you had a particular scan where you wanted the best results, that could be cool. Psychic Monkey. Hey, Hamish, how you going, man? Cool. Got a few Melbourne locals here. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's the latest. I've moved house. I'm in the process of moving still. Still a lot of things to move over. A lot of mess to go through, but I'm still planning videos. I've still got things coming up. I've got the Valoi that I need to start testing. And another thing I'm doing is I have been in chats with Fujifilm. If any of you guys watched some of my previous live streams, I talked about the idea of looking at an X-Pro3 and testing it from the perspective of a film shooter, comparing it to my Leica, sorry, I'm trying try not to fall off this chair, uh, the Leica MA, which is what I currently use, a, a proper rangefinder, but I have always been intrigued by the Fuji X-Pro system. I've never really used one. And I love the uh, philosophy of the X-Pro3 being something that's just meant to not get in the way and, you know, the whole, I don't mind the flipped hidden screen because you can just unfold it if you like. As a street photography camera, I know the X-Pro3 isn't for everyone, but for me as a street photographer who uses the Leica MA, I think it would be a pretty cool video and uh, test for myself to actually look at the X-Pro3 and compare the shooting experience to using a Leica. And I know it's not exactly the same, but it's just fun, you know, and it could be interesting for some people who mainly shoot street on film, but wouldn't mind a digital camera that can give them some of the same experience. Now, I will test manual focus lenses on the X-Pro3, such as a 28mm, which becomes a 35. And I have been in chats with Fujifilm and I'm happy to say that it looks like I'm gonna be able to borrow a unit from them and, uh, have them sort of support this uh, review and test and future YouTube video. So that's pretty exciting for me that YouTube is going to, um, oh, sorry, not YouTube, Fuji Film's gonna um, let me borrow an X-Pro3 so that I can do that test. Uh, one of the reps said that's a pretty cool idea. He's actually interested in seeing that perspective. So that could be fun. Let me know also if there's anything that you wanna see from that video, if you have any questions, so I can integrate that into my test of the X-Pro3, which hopefully, should be something I get in the next week or so and test it in the few weeks following that. Bit of a hassle. What's going on, Hamish? Nice. Good Aussie slang there. <laughs> New channel called Pushing Pixels. Yeah, maybe. I've actually toyed with the name of um, the, the idea of changing the channel name. Not to that, but like maybe just to my name or something because I would like to do more videos 
not purely focused on film, even though that is my main, you know, interest and passion when it comes to sharing this stuff. But obviously I shoot a lot of digital too. Which strap do you use for your MA? I use the artisans and artist, but the rewind knob is slowly digging through the strap. This one is actually a strap I bought in Japan. It's a leather strap. It's actually kind of losing its color. It's getting a bit of a browning when it was originally quite black, but it has these great leather protectors here so that you don't get that scratching. Sorry, the camera's um, on face detect, but yeah, it's a really nice strap and I can't remember the name, unfortunately, of the brand. It was a little store in Osaka in Japan that I bought in person. So that's probably not much help to you. Um, yeah, if you message me on Instagram later, I'll try and dig up the brand if I can remember it. I have the B850, but 120 film doesn't fit. Okay. You should be able to get holders for 120 on a V850. Definitely. What scanner do you have? If you're asking about me, I don't have a flatbed scanner anymore. I used to have a V800, but I sold it. Thinking of getting a V850 or V750, whichever comes up first on the secondhand market. It, my advice is if, unless you're doing wet mount scanning, there's no need to go for the V850. It's much more expensive. And the main benefit is the, you know, the wet mounting system that you get with it. It's essentially the same scanner as a V800 with a couple of minor differences. If you want some leather conditioner to bring out the darker color, check out Red Wing Leather Conditioner. Oh yeah, I think I actually have some Red Wing um, beeswax or something, but I've never actually bothered with the, the camera strap. I don't mind it too much. It only really shows the brown in, in bright light, but that's, that's good advice. What enticed you or move from the M4 to the MA? At the time, I knew the price was gonna jump up on the MAs and I just had a good opportunity to buy one. There was a good price through a friend at the Leica store who was selling one on commission. And I just really wanted one, basically. I just like the camera. I like the um, the added 28mm frame lines. I like the slightly or quite significantly better rangefinder patch and viewfinder. Um, for something that I'm using every day, it's like the logical upgrade for me um, as a long-term camera. No real need for it. I just really wanted one. So yeah, and Leica's hold their resale value. So I was able to sell the M4 and get this because there was a good deal on it. So it was, yeah. Not quite impulsive. I had my eye on one for a long time because I also wanted a black body. I know it seems silly, but um, yeah, I just really wanted a black MA for a while. So I just got one. Important question. Did you remove the bottom plate plastic? Well, I got mine secondhand. So yeah, I couldn't justify paying for a new one. Um, yeah, I got a secondhand one. So the bottom is already a bit scratched up, but I don't mind it. I got it to use it and uh, yeah, it ended up costing just a little bit over double what an M4 does, which to me is really good because the value on these is already going up. And that was uh, part of my reasoning. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much the two main things I'm gonna be working on soon is the uh, X-Pro3 testing and sh film shooters perspective of using that camera on especially street photography, but also a few other things, the Veloy and uh, a few other things that I won't bother mentioning now. So plenty of videos coming up. And uh, yeah, the move means that I might not have anything out for another week at least. Maybe I'll try and chuck in another live stream or two, but things are pretty tricky at the moment with work and with this move. So I appreciate all the support. And for all you guys for joining right now in this live stream, to me, it's huge. The fact that I can actually jump on and uh, have more than like one or two people on a live stream like those first couple that I did. Um, yeah, I hope you like the new space. I'm gonna try and improve the lighting a little bit and uh, work on just everything on the channel in general this year going forward as I have been trying to do. So before I head off, last question, just thrifted an Epson 4990 for peanuts. What scanning software would you recommend mainly to use for black and white film negatives? For black and white, I honestly just like the Epson scan software. I find it works perfectly fine. And I, I always use that. I messed with other software like um, Silverfast, but for black and white, I always would just end up back on the Epson scan software in the professional mode and it works well. So um, I know a lot of people recommend the other software, but for black and white, I really don't think you need it unless you really want to have a lot of fine tuned control. And even then Epson scan software is enough for that when it comes to black and white. 
as an X100V and film shooter. I've been really happy with the latest Fuji. Should check out Fuji X weekly JPEG film sim simulations. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to look into the film simulations when I do my test and kind of make a little comparison between, you know, let's say Fuji Superior and some kind of simulation that someone has made and like classic neg. So yeah, thanks for those suggestions. If anyone is watching this post stream, feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments for either of these two upcoming videos. Obviously, if this video is you're watching it and it's weeks or months old, I may have already made those videos, so that doesn't apply. But if it's only a couple of weeks out, you might be able to get some suggestions into those comments. Looking forward to what's coming. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. And uh, VW, thank you and appreciate it for all you do for the film community. <laughs> Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, anyone else who's watching, I hope you guys are all well and you're having fun shooting film, keeping safe, whatever people say. So <laughs> awkward, but that's live stream for you. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there and I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Bye.